Hello, everybody. Happy, wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Um, it's always good to, to be here. Always good to uh, be seen. And um, I'm glad that you came to hang out with us tonight. This is Through the Eyes of Others. Uh, this is the Promise Resource Network conversations that um, circle around and deal with the emotional residue that many people are experiencing as a result of watching real life being lived, right? Um, we Every day we're watching um, life being lived. And so through the eyes of others allows us to, um, my term, nobody else is to report what's going on through the lives of others. Sometimes we all see the same thing, but we see it differently. We grab it differently. We approach it differently. And that's because we all live, live our lives and see our lives through our own eyes. Uh, we are firm believers in thought that um, being able to share what other people see gives us an opportunity of more connectivity, right? We we can deal with more empathy when we see life through the through the lives of others. And so, as usual, we have great guests coming on tonight. And I always say we have great guests, but we really do. We really do tonight. We have um, some great people that's coming on, that's doing community work. Um, we know that in serving people, there's always vicarious trauma attached to it. Um, Kenya and I was just talking a moment ago with Lisa about um, you work hard to help a person's life move forward and then bam, they get, they get hit with something out of the, out of, out of the blue. And all of a sudden the disappointment sets in. And many times, uh, we wear that. We wear that because we walk along people every step of the way. We do it in family. We do it in careers. And so we want to talk about the vicarious trauma that is attached to, um, the work that we do. So before we introduce our panel and guests, I want to introduce my sidekick, Lisa K. Lisa K, come on board and say hello to the folks. What's going on with you tonight, Lisa? Hey. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Promise you. Aaron does a great job talking us through this. And, um, well, sometimes. <laughs> no, he does. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm really excited about tonight. Um you guys are definitely, and everybody will hear more about that in a second. You guys are partner, partnering with us for a great uh, mission and passion that we have. And uh, your commitment uh, is to be commended. And we are honored to have you on tonight to hear all about you and what you guys are doing and and um, take, it, take it from there. And um, before we get started, uh, I just want to give out a shout to Aaron Wells. This is his uh, birthday Eve. Um, oh. Yes, if, if I didn't say it, he was. Yeah, it was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, it was going to come up because uh, it has all day today in any meeting or show we did. So, um, yes, yeah, his birthday Eve. So we'll wish him a happy birthday. So all you guys coming on tonight. Um, thank you. We changed our time. Uh, and got people hopping on right away. So I might have been correct about my start time. We'll see. Because um, I know for me, it was a lot nicer starting at 630 versus six. So um, we're just happy and excited tonight. And we got some folks chiming in already on the chat. Guys, we just ask that you um, chat it up, ask questions, make comments, encourage our partners that are coming on with us tonight, show them some love, some PRN love. And uh, we got Miss Roberta already chiming in. She's in Puerto Rico watching us right now. She is one of our champ, uh, recovery champions at, with PRN. And um, she is uh, chiming in, even though she's not even at home. She's in Puerto Rico. So uh, I hope you're having a good time, Roberta. And thank you for coming on. And uh, so tonight we're going to have a, a good discussion. And tonight is about um, bringing in that trauma piece, but also the vicarious trauma. And uh, just a simple definition that Aaron and I have is the cost of loving people. And that's what we do each and every day. And there's always a cost. And uh, we know it's worth it, but we also know that we have to uh, take care of ourselves. And the first thing is recognizing that there is such a thing as vicarious trauma. So we're going to hear some uh, great 
uh, testimonies and some passions and um, commitments that our partners are making and what their lives are doing right now. And we'll kind of tie all that in. And um, then Aaron will wrap it up with some great stuff about taking care of ourselves. So uh, hope you'll share this. Um, go ahead and share it now. Get people watching. And uh, those that come on later and watch it taped, we hope you'll share it as well because you never know who might just need that word, that sentence of encouragement. Um, so, but yeah, we're excited. So I'm glad to be here tonight. Thank you, Lisa K. So very much. And the last word on sharing um, as you share, remember, we're going for 10,000 um, subscribers on our Promise Resource Network, the PRN uh, YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Let's get our, our, our word of recovery and wellness into the homes of everybody that we possibly possibly can. I see you down there, Jess. We're going to get you in there, sister. Some way, somehow. All right, we're going to figure this out. I got to get Jess in in a moment, y'all. So forgive me. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Hmm. Just hold on for just a moment. I'm going to figure that out. But while we do that, here we go. Through the eyes of others. We have some guests here tonight that we want to bring in. There's a lot of work going on in the city of Charlotte, a lot nationwide, but specifically in the city of Charlotte, being able to uh, love on, being able to support, being able to help. Um, often we call them the um, the homeless, those who are experiencing homelessness. Um, many of the people who we serve um, are not as, we call them homeless, but they have homes, but sometimes their homes are tents. Um, sometimes their homes are um, empty buildings, but they have a dwelling and they have a place to, to, to stay. And, but it's usually not, um, at a level of, of life that they, that they desire. And so there are people who day in and day out, uh, embed themselves in the lives of those who, um, are struggling with, um, houselessness or homelessness. And these people are superheroes to me. They are people who, in spite of, um, all of the obstacles, in spite of all of the barriers, um, who often get no pay, no financial pay, no financial rewards, and they find a reward in helping and serving the community. And we must remember that this is community. Um, our families are not separated from the verbiage of the definition of community simply because they're no longer in our household. It's still community. And so these champions, these superheroes that are with us tonight, are people who go inside, right? They dwell, they walk all along all along the way. They, they're there with the, when the temperature is 100 degrees, they're there when the snow is falling. Um, they're there when there are no clothes, they are there when um, the food truck comes, they are there. They are there to help people get ID cards, they're there to hug, they're there to support, to comfort. These are the heroes and they go um, so often understated, right? Because we always, we don't know. We look often and so often at the problem, um, but we're not looking at the people who are really digging in with the solutions. And some of them are here tonight. So without my further ado, I want to introduce some people or actually have them introduce themselves as we talk about um, as we talk about what's going on, um, which is including how you're dealing with and how you shape life every day to help. And so I'm going to start um, with Bethany. And guest, <laughs> um, if you would, Bethany, I want you to come on and uh, introduce yourself and introduce your guest, my buddy, and <laughs> let us know what you're going. But Bethany, before we do that, have you seen your name up in lights like this lately? I mm -hmm. did see it, not, not like that. I'm, I'm actually the programs director. This is my director. This is my executive mm -hmm. director, the man that is in charge of everything and has created this entire foundation. So he is my my guru. Um, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> he's my rock. So he's the reason that that we're all you know that our group is here and and being able to do what we do because because Joe this is Joe Davis and Joe, hey, Joe. Heartspeed is one. So uh, I'll let you say a few things, I guess. Oh I sure. So um, no titles needed around here. We just try to do good things for others and um, we got we got so, so, uh, um, we are. Um, I don't know. Are we just going to do introductions right now? Or are we going to talk about them? Yeah, just do introductions right now, and then we'll dig in. All right. Perfect. Sounds great. Perfect. But I want you to know, Joe, um, the other day I was at one of our places, right? 
and um, trying to, I was, I was there to support someone and um, our buddy Phoebe kept saying, I got to get, I got to connect you to Joe. Is Joe still here? Is Joe still here? So <laughs> look, it's like five people running through the parking lot looking for Joe. So good to meet you, Joe. Yeah, that's perfect. 90% of my life is chasing Joe, so it's okay. We'll all have so yeah. we, we, hey, look, I have joined the Chase Joe Club, so <laughs> welcome, Joe. Good to see you. Um, okay. Also with us are two other champions, two other superheroes that um, I met last week, and um, one by phone, one hanging out. Um, <laughs> Jess, Jess was just so happy that I was so tall and we just began to bond over our height. I want to bring on Jessica and Kenya of Hearts for the Invisible Charlotte Coalition. Ladies, if you would introduce yourself, say hi, and um, we'll take it from there. Who's going first? Me and Kenya. Let, let you can go, go first, first. Jess. Me? You want okay. me to go first? All right. Okay. Um, Jessica Lefkowitz, founder of Hearts for the Invisible Charlotte Coalition. Um, Started this work just based off of the need. Um, I personally went out there because I got laid off from my job and um, went out there one day with my sandwiches and and have been there every day since. Um, and don't look. I mean, I I I. What I hope is that there's not a need for this kind of work at some point. But as long as there is, I plan to be in this grind. Mm. Kenya. Hi, I'm Kenya Joseph. Um, I met Jessica out on the street. <laughs> we were both serving. Um, I also have another nonprofit, Hearts and Hands Food Pantry. And so we started working um, in the tent encampment alongside um, our main service. And that's how I met Jessica. And, you know, we became fast family out there serving the people that are out there. Um, and it just morphed into, you know, us starting a full-blown organization and really, you know, mobilizing with this as it grew. So, um, yeah, I've been kind of in this work for about four years now. Um, we've had the coalition for about nine months, but we, that, they've been very fast nine months. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Kenya, I want to start with you and thank thank you all four of you for hanging out with us uh, hanging out with us tonight. Kenya, I want to start with you. So Kenya, what was life looking like for you the day that you decided that this is the direction that you you wanted to go? Um, I know you what you saw, right? Because we all have seen um, the same thing. Whether we've seen it differently, we all have seen it, and there was the need. But specifically for you, what was going on with you? at the point where you said, you know what, I'm digging in. This is, this is where I'm going to help out at. I mean, for me, the, the first thought was we can do better. And it was really about, you know, just looking at what was happening and figuring out kind of how to mobilize behind it. Um, we, we were evaluating kind of what was happening with everybody out there um, in terms of what their needs were, we saw when I started before we had the coalition, um, we saw that there were people who were out there feeding. So we didn't want to kind of repeat service. So we were looking at where were there gaps in uh, people's needs. And so we started giving out survival supplies. But one of the biggest things that we were able to do is that we got uh, a lot of people signed up for their stimulus payments. So that was a big thing that we just kind of came to on the blue, like that was in the midst of all of that happening. And we were like, well, who's dealing with letting these people know they have a right to get their stimulus checks as well. They need to be able to access that money that they're entitled to as well. So that's where we started. That's literally how I met Jessica, because we had a table out there um, and she just walked up to us and introduced herself and it just kind of went from there. So Jessica, um, as for you, so, what what was it? Where was life at for you when you said that you left your, your job and you you saw this need? What was going on with you when you made that decision that this is where I'm going to plant my flag? Well, I, I mean, I thought I was going to go back to work after three months and um, that didn't happen. But what I in the beginning of COVID, there really wasn't that many people out there um, doing much. And I found myself like literally falling in love with, with the people. 
and and connecting with them and knowing that that they they needed kind of that personal connection. I mean, I think a lot of people have been disconnected from from everything and everyone for so long. Um, and those personal connections drive. Bethany Wild Hearts Beat is one. We met we met out there too. And we've been thick and leaves ever since as well. Like, um, you know, and I'm I don't, I'm sure her story is very similar to mine. Like we, once you get out there, like you know you gotta keep coming out there. You gotta keep this energy going. You gotta build these relationships with these folks to trust. And I and, and again, that trust is how a lot of these people went into these hotels in the first place. Okay. I might be done a little bit, but that's no. Mm-mm. You're, you're, you're good. So, um, uh, Bethany and Joe, <laughs> um, so as you, as you shape um, Heartbeat as one, has it become what it is that you wanted it to become? Um, have you had to make any shifts from the original um, thought and vision to where we are, are now, or has this really evolved into what you thought it would evolve into? Um. Absolutely. We, it has become what I think that uh, I initially envisioned it becoming, but um, on, a, on a more grand scale, um, we were more of a support organization through our first five years. We had one major program, which was in our early childhood development called the Dolly Parton and Meditation Library, which people may have heard of. And we've always existed to, um, to fill uh, an emerging or emergency need. Um, and so it was in our fifth year that we decided to onboard some additional programs. And so uh, people seem to really respond to us with animals. And so we we decided to um, uh, to go into family to, to, out, to have outreach to families that have animals um, that may um, need some additional assistance, um, both the families and the animals. It was a kind of a pile on the small program. And that was in November prior to the okay. um, prior to COVID, and then um, things really just broke free in March fifteenth of last year when uh, when everything really shut down, and so we uh, immediately started raising a lot more money than we had seen in the past, and um, we're feeding, um, uh, and we're still have a, we're expanding our food security program. Um, and beyond, and a few weeks after that, started all working in the ten, ten encampments, and now we have um, sustained programming in all three of those spaces, um, and uh, only continuing to grow the um, the the program into um, programs into more comprehensive um, place offering various services. Um, and we're also one of the groups that is actually in the um, the hotel number one. That has uh, become the main hotel, and the first where the first 130 of people that were relocated um, are now. So we were both on the ground with with uh, Jessica and Kenya when we found out we had 72 hours to yeah. Yeah. individuals, yeah. and uh, I took I had a day job, so I took off the rest of the week, yeah. um, and uh, and then we were all collectively successful, and we're we're very great partners with Jessica. And yeah. Kenya. We just saw them earlier today in person. So, um, but yes, so all, yes to all of that. Mark, I think, I think he comes in. He, he just, <laughs> he's the speaker. He's the eloquent speaker. Well, well, Bethany, I do want to ask you this. So um, pandemic hits, right? And mm -hmm. so it, it does it change how mobilization happens to be able to serve, um, especially when Tent City existed? Um, did the pandemic... How did pandemic change how service happened? How did pandemic have change how we um, put our hands on and be able to serve to make sure we can account for our people and make sure that we can they can receive everything that they need? And then um, so we get through pandemic and then that 72 hour abatement order comes. What were those two adjustments? The first for you when pandemic came, what adjustments really needed to be made? to keep the impact as it was, and then after the 72 hours, how did you mobilize? I think, you know, one of the things that I've loved the most about the foundation, you know, when I joined is that the flexibility um, and, and our ability to kind of pivot and fill the gaps and kind of look at these situations on a greater scale. Um, you know, when we initially were out in the camps, we were doing like, like meals and water. And, you know, I started to look around and we were like, there's there's so many more needs like they, they need batteries, they need flashlights, they need, you know, the things that we take for granted and we don't think about, 
you know, reading glasses and books and clothing and things like that. So we immediately kind of just, just pivoted and created this outreach program. Um, and we found that one of the biggest needs out there, especially, you know, with, with the, the temperatures in the summer and the winter, um, in the summer, we just started to bring hundreds of pounds of ice. So, you know, a lot of, they still call me the ice lady. It's the funny, <laughs> they forget my name, they call me the ice lady. Yeah. But we, what we did was we would come into the camps every day with seven to 800 pounds of ice. And, you know, even if people didn't have coolers, we would get them coolers and we would distribute that as well, um, you know, for comfort and, and for, for food and, and water and things like that. So I think we did about 92,000 pounds last year when we put it all together, um, bringing up there. So that's something that I'm really proud of and that I love this group for is that we make those personal connections and we listen to the stories. And it's not just, you know, there's, there's not this bureaucratic system that, that we have in place. We listen to what they need and we find a way to take care of those things and, and to put these things in people's hands. So I love that. What I'm on that for the 72 hours. Oh, the 72 on. hours. I, I think we're all still like, as you would say, vicariously traumatized, if anything. Yeah. That, was, that was something that, you know, obviously we all would have liked a little more time. So we could have organized a little better. Um, yeah. But, you know, as I've said numerous times, what I loved is the collaboration with the groups. You know, we all showed up. We brought our computers. We brought canopies for people to stand under. We brought food. We brought all of the things that uh, the people issuing the abatement order did not address or think of. And so yet again, that kind of highlighted our flexibility and we were able to kind of make our programs are very malleable to, to kind of address what's needed. And we all partnered together. And it was, I mean, I would, I don't hesitate to say that a lot of the success of that transition was due to the grassroots organizations that knew these people and, and gave them a sense of comfort versus, you know, you can hand them a piece of paper that says what's going to happen to you in the next 72 hours. Yeah. But when you see the faces of the people that have been out there because they love you and not because they're getting a paycheck, it definitely changes the stigma around the programs. And it definitely helped at least give some sense of comfort and community during the transition. Yeah. I think. Just to add that, I, I mean, I, I think that we were hoping that we may get 50 or 60 people to agree, uh, knowing there are a lot more folks out there. And then after the first day of meeting, we were here with parts of the invisible in this area room. Mm -hmm. So like two in the morning. Looking at a spreadsheet that had 180 mm -hmm. people oh on it, God. figuring out what we were going to do yeah. from there. And, <laughs> and we mobilized the next morning with walkie-talkies, and uh, it was sleeping, and, and uh, everyone that we asked to show up showed up at 9 o'clock, and it took us a whole lot longer to get those people <laughs> to, to the hotels. Yeah. Um, just just uh, if there was a lot of logistics. Um, and then addressing the rest, other part of your question about uh, now that I'm in the hotels, uh, that has all things. You know, the, some of the same needs are there, but no one's asking for us for a tent anymore. No one's asking us for <laughs> right. a sleeping bag. So those are all different. What we do now is um, try to make these folks feel like at home and something that has completely changed for them um, and uh, provide services that now I, there's a sort of a captive audience for lack of a better word so um in partnership with the county and a lot of other other groups like your own we're able to provide on-site services to get people substance abuse um mm -hmm. offerings and all health and uh every, things that are beyond uh just basic needs so that we're able to potentially um help some of them in their homeless situation by by the end of uh, this full month Thank you so much. Listen, Jess, I want to circle back around with you, continue conversation. So I'm 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 with you. Um, I guess it was Saturday and Friday and you um, you're like a superhero. So um, like for real. And so how do you receive? How do you bear? Now, here we go. Right. How do you bear the weight, if we can call it that, of responsibility knowing that you've not only developed these relationships, but in these relationships, people depend on the folks on this screen. I mean, they, they don't depend on systems anymore. <laughs> they depend on the people on the screen. How do you balance that? Because that is an important burden to bear. Um, we're human, we're fallible, uh, but every day people wake up looking for you to, to find solutions and answers. How do you, how do you handle that? 
So if I'm being honest, please be. I, I, you just you keep pushing, you keep pushing, and then I'll get with uh, Bethany, Kenya, and Joe. And we'll be in the same room, and we'll just have like an ah moment. So that that you have our release, and we'll get, you know, have a little, you know, follow and you know, and kind of release it together. Uh, we do that quite often, actually. Um, <laughs> We've all definitely gotten super close, um, especially in the last um, couple of months. But I mean, I think all of us kind of were in the position to have to take in all of their trauma as well. I mean, they, they had nobody to release it to. So it's like, Miss Jess, Miss Bethany, Miss Joe, all my stuff is gonna be gone. Can you hold my stuff? And I mean, I know you personally, I had several breakdowns um, during that 72 hours. It was tough. I mean, but I, what I do want to do is, is, and I know for all of us on this call, it was important for us to see all the way through and be there every single step of the way. Um, and that's something we are all committed to. And we still, we still are continuing to um, service and, uh, these members that were displaced so, so fast. Like, this was no time for anybody to get there. Um, How to be invisible is also still servicing the individuals that are still in the street. Everybody didn't make it into the hotels, so we still actively working with them. So, I mean, the work continues. It's, it's just that simple. This, this work is ongoing um, as we all get the solutions, and which, you know, we, we are entering into a lane where we are starting that process now, um, but it's, it's going to take the community to to help with this problem. It's not just this one and, and, and collectively we all just work hard at, at achieving that. Thank you so much. So Kenya, before I bring Lisa on, um, what does this look like 90 days and, and Kenya sort of, I mean, uh, Jess sort of just hit on it. Um, 90 days is over pretty soon. 120 is over pretty soon. What does this look like for both um, um, what happens with the people that we serve but also with the coalitions. How do the coalitions stay together? Because that's the true impact right there. So first, our folks, right, that we serve, 90 days, 120, before we know it is gone, what happens then and how do we keep the coalitions together? So I think day 91, I think amongst all of us is kind of a D-Day. We don't know what day 91 is gonna look like it really is dependent on how many people get placed for different types of housing, how many people have been placed in programs that they need so that they can, you know, be lifted up and beyond this situation. Um, and what I can say is that, you know, all of us collectively are banded together around this community. And that's really what it's going to take. At the very least, we are acting as a buffer. We're, you know, constantly looking ahead and, and making connections and strengthening connections that can provide, you know, individual services and individual needs. Because that's the thing about the community. You know, I think there's a public perception that it's a monolith, but the reality is that it's all individuals with individual needs and individual stories. So us working in the field, it's so important for us to connect and stay connected in working on solutions that are innovative and outside of the box to be able to address the individual needs. You know, we don't want to come to a situation where, you know, we get to day 91 and 15 people got housing out of you know, the 220 plus that are impacted by this situation. And at the same time is that, you know, we want to continue to provide all of our different services to the folks who chose not to go in or did, were not able to get into the hotels on top of that. So it's, it's the cohesion amongst us on the ground, the grassroots organization, you know, is tantamount to the success of what happens in this situation at this point. Thank you so much. Lisa Kay, come on board if you don't mind and let's talk with our, our superheroes here who are on the front lines and um, making such a, a, a big difference. They're absorbing a lot there, Lisa. They're giving a lot, but they are, they are absorbing a lot. So who's on chat with us, Lisa? And and give us, give us your Lisa take. All right. Yeah, they are giving us a lot. Um, 
it's like being a, a sponge just being doused in some water, a big bowl of water. It's a lot. Um, but we have uh, Miss Darlene is in the house tonight. Uh, she's another one of our PRN champion, recovery champions. Always glad to see Miss Darlene. And uh, Kelly Little is on with us. Kelly, what do Peace and blessings to everyone and uh, everybody saying hey. And so we just want uh, sending their hearts and thumbs up. We just want everybody to keep checking in. Got some feedback. I don't know where that's from, but um, oh, keep chatting, keep making comments. Uh, we sure do appreciate it. And remember to share, share this. Um, well, I've heard a lot. Um, so I kind of just want to recap as we, as we talk about, you know, being there for our um, our houseless neighbors, as Miss Deb coined it, as as being there, you know, with them through this transition of the unknown, as well as the people that decided not to transition, right? That they are still out there, and more people are coming. It's like, you know, there's more and more people, our neighbors that are becoming houseless uh, as we speak. So it's not like we cut the water faucet off right mm -hmm. it's still happening you know i you know it is so you've got all that building up so it's not just this uh 100 over here and this 100 over here there's more out there in the streets uh or in other places as well as it's it's just continuing to happen in our community so we we know that um so some things that I heard that really resonated with um, the, the that sets us up for the huge possibility of vicarious trauma happening. And by nature, just what you guys do, what Aaron and I do set us up for that because we are like sponges. We absorb it. We try to find solutions with it, but we are still, our sponge can get really heavy. So I heard Joe talk about families with animals. Well, if anybody saw my puppies running around, you probably hear them later on. I got three, three puppies myself. And as you said that, as we've heard different stories, that alone would be some trauma and vicarious trauma for me because I love uh, my animals so much. And to find myself uh, not being able to take care of them would be tough. And, and Joe, I, I know you said that, that it kind of came to you, but you had to have a heart for that. You know, you really had to have a heart for that. The people who are animal lovers, whoo, we got a double whammy here. Whether it's a cat mm -hmm. or a dog or a hamster or a goat, it don't matter. <laughs> that that houseless, our houseless neighbor loves that animal. It is there, may not be a service animal, but it serves love for them. It's mm -hmm. their family. And so I just thank you so much for what you're doing on that end of it. And hope folks that are listening, if that's something that they have a heart for, can find out how they can help you with the animal part of it as well, right? So I know how much it costs me every week to feed my puppies <laughs> and mm -hmm. what they require. It's a lot. So especially if it's more than one. So they're, they're alone is just, for me, just as soon as you said animals, I started going back to some some things that flooded my mind around that. Um, you also said, Joe, that um, through all of this, you work another job. I um, do. Work, work work job. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, having those huge other responsibilities during the day. But I know all of this had to just be like the backdrop for you. Um, you know, what was going on and what that was going to look like because none of us knew 72 hours to pull this thing together. Like you said, y'all were up till two o'clock in the morning putting like a strategic plan together, how to and not knowing how it was going to work. Uh, and kind of, I don't know how many people were surrounding you at two o'clock in the morning, but it probably was didn't feel like nearly enough to what you were going to encounter the next day, yeah. knowing that, um. The relationships have been built and the expectations when they saw your faces, right? Yes. You know, uh, there's Bethany. They they got to have the answers. Let me run to them, right? What's going on? And knowing that trying to keep, um, you know, things 
calm and keep people where they can hear because we know when, when trauma is happening with our with ourselves as well as others one of the first things that we lose is our hearing um because we're we're in that panic that that mode that uh we're scared it's not safe anymore unfortunately I, I, I don't know why our hearing goes, but we don't hear like what we need to hear. So knowing that I know it had to be tough. So, so Joe, for you, uh, as just the pieces, the little nuggets that you are, you've already shared, and I know that there's like millions of hours more you could share. Uh, for you, as we think about the animals, as we think about you working another job, you being like the head person over there in your organization trying to strategically plan at two o'clock in the morning, not knowing, like you're like getting ready for battle or something, <laughs> but it, it was, it was a battle around the trauma, not, not our people, but this, just the trauma and trying to figure that what, what was going through your head and what, what has that been like for you through the 72 hours and through the weeks that we've been into this, what has that alone personally been like for you? Other than uh, no sleep. Uh, 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 that first day, we did, I think we and I were 31 hours without sleep because we had to go directly to the hotel after the move in. And then we stayed 18 hour shifts and then had to go right back into it the next day. And I think we ended up with like 57 hours we worked with like three hours of sleep. So that gives you the picture of how we were functioning at that time. Yeah, we, um, so. As we were planning for the location in those late nights, um, and it's turned into really long days, um, my concern was my team, for one, and, and which, had by extension, also became the other folks on our call as well because we were really working together at that time, along with several other organizations, to, um, to try to be sure that, that this happened. If we were going to jump on board, with what the county had asked, and at least for new people to the camp from the county talking to us, that um, that we did it right, and we that these trusted people, persons out in the in the encampments were um, were that we weren't making a wrong decision for them, um, or guiding them in the wrong in the wrong direction. So trying to gather facts, be sure that it was the right thing to do for one, um, and then uh, try to try to have an organized front. Um, and that's uh, what we did. We all were literally from the grassroots organizations, which is who was asked to to do this by the county. Um, we're, we 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 organized ourselves. We got into the right place at the right time, and um, and so it was. So then, then my concern was about making sure that people were comfortable uh, that were that we were relocating and. Um, it, you know, there was a talk about transportation. How, but we we were able to get everyone ready to move uh, at the gate of the roof above, which is what we did, then were we just going to send them on their way and, and hope for the best? <laughs> because we didn't, we didn't know. And so um, so we made sure that someone was on those buses uh, or, or, or with some, or, then, or on the other side when they arrived and could help, um, help with the intake. And uh, at about 4 o'clock that afternoon, we were asked to staff the hotel. I had no idea. Surprise! Yeah, surprise. surprise. They, don't, they didn't have a plan for it. So, so, we, um, so we have been responsive um, in, the, in that and have become the primary group that's doing that at the, prim at the, at the main hotel now. And so uh, I will tell you that my vision, if I had one, and the clarity or any leadership I might have had was gone by... Saturday, whenever I hadn't slept for, for the 48 hours or so, and so I had to take one full day, at least 12 hours for myself, to, real, to be able to be what I need for the organization and for the people we're helping. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was something. But, you know, like we said, it's it's having Ken and Jessica and all of us are, you know, texting each other all day and all night and being like, can you bring this? And can you, you know, and it, it's funny you mentioned the animal part because Actually, Joe and I were just walking dogs. One of our one of our uh, our hotel um, guests has two amazing pit bulls, and uh, he actually had to leave for a couple of days. And so, of course, I was like, "I'll take the dogs." Which I can't take any dogs, but I was like, "I'll take the dogs." So that led into me having to go up three times a day and walk them. And so, um, you know, Jessica knows the dogs. We. You know, we go up and take you care love of the babies. Comfortable. Yeah. They are, they are, but they mean so much to him. You know, like it's a, it's a huge part of his existence. And so, 
Therefore, yeah. you know, it's an extension of him, and we take care of him. We take care of the things he loves. Yeah. For this gentleman, it's really these animals are, well, might seem untrained to us. Um, I think they're really sweet, but um, a bigger part of his, uh, they're critical to his, to his mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important that we provide that continuity. Right. So not only uh, just here in all the hours that you guys work um, and trying to take care of your self-care, which we'll get to, you know, you're, you're balancing out um, what you know people need um, as well as, you know, for themselves and their, their animals. And that's, that's, that's huge. And they get surprised with other duties like staffing where they are and they're like, oh, yeah, what does that look like? Like, yeah, I know. So, wow, it, you guys uh, really stepped up to the plate. Um, so there, you know, definitely is a lot of things you guys have absorbed, right? Okay. From, I know the, that the, what we, Aaron and I have done and our staff have done, we absorbed a lot and we didn't spend nearly the hours that you guys have been up, up there helping out. So we'll get to that, but I just wanted to bring awareness that I'm hearing um, just, there's a lot of cough, uh, some from sleep, personal time with your family, friends, and your lives, as well as balance and other responsibilities. So, uh, and you know, uh, Bethany, you're the ice lady, so I couldn't help but thinking um, how you know, throughout this and even before, like, yeah, you were a, you were something everybody wanted, someone, so everybody wanted to see. Um, so I think you said ninety-two thousand pounds of ice. That yeah. is amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Nobody yeah. even thinks about things like that to that extent. That's a lot of ice. Oh, yeah, we, they were looking for that ice. They yes. depended on it. They needed it. It was definitely, yes. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's that's just something that they knew would come and they relied on. And you know, it, we were happy to do. And we all have kind of made the transition too in the winter. The same thing with firewood. You know, trying to keep them warm and in the same way but it's it's really interesting just how all the organizations like ours and Hudson Invisible and how we all just kind of like took the reins on different things and made sure we took care of you know so as much as Joe and I are at the hotel every single day and dealing with that you know we take comfort knowing that Jessica and Tony are taking care of under the bridge until we can get back out you know so like we all we all kind of help each other that's a huge part of the success of all of these. Absolutely. Well, just a few more observations. Our time's going to get away from us before we realize it. We could go another, I don't know how many hours, but we, we could. Um, I know, you know, Kenya, uh, you talked about uh, day 91 being D day. And I, you know, I've had those thoughts myself. Uh, and um, so when you said that, I, I, I really felt some, you know, some some kind of way when you said that. I, I felt like, oh, you know. And so when you say that or when you had that thought of this being D-Day, what was that like for you? Um, <laughs> I mean, that that was definitely when all this happened. You know, we literally found out from a news story and within an hour we were in a meeting with the county and they were giving us kind of the lay of the land of what they were planning to do. My first thought from that moment was, all right, we have 90 days to get all this situated you know, it's huge. It's a lot. It's it's definitely heavy because, you know, it's not just about 90 days. It's about all the lives that are hanging in the balance in that time that, you know, have to have needs met. And so that's been, you know, my number one concern in this and in, in that motivates me personally in this work right now is really just, you know, all that we can do to make sure that there is success at the end of the 90 days as opposed to you know further trauma because you know getting anybody getting evicted from anywhere at any time is traumatic so you can only imagine what that is on a mass scale you know in such a short amount of time and it was extremely chaotic experience so you know that's that's the part that motivates me but it you know it is heavy it is it is a big concern it is something that you know i think about every day as we move forward because time is really flying in this situation yeah yeah absolutely absolutely um 
And Jessica, you made a, a comment about um, our folks being concerned about their things, like where they're, you know, can you hold my things? Yeah. So I know that, that kind of flooded me with some, some of my own um, vicarious traumas when we, before COVID uh, in our own organization, trying to help people find safe places for their things. It didn't matter how much one little bag, it didn't matter what it was, but it was precious to them. So as you said that, I heard it in your voice. So what, Talk, talk me a little bit about what that means for you. Well, I mean, that was, there was a couple of times on moving day, we'll call that moving day, where I had people come to me like, Miss Jessica, well, I, I, I can't just take two bags. I, 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 I can't give up all my things. And I said, boop, 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 boop. I made a phone call. We had a whole nother crew up the street. Um, and, and, um, they were assisting with the last encampment. I had one of the guys come over and get that young woman's stuff. And we have it in storage right now. So we have a plan to keep the stuff in storage at, at, at least for three months, um, and potentially longer depending on the situation. Cause she was devastated and she, she's a little bitty thing. I think you guys might've met her, um, at the second hotel the other day, but anyway, she, she lost it. Like everybody. Everybody, I think, has this perception that because you were living on, living in tents, that and you're now being offered um, a room, that life is just automatically going to be great for these individuals, and that's not necessarily the case. I think you need to kind of look at it as if your house caught on fire, and you, you're going into that house and you're trying to scramble and get the last little bits bits and pieces of things that you love, and and try to put that into two bags. That's traumatic. Yes. Um, and I, and, you know, just witnessing that. And so it was real important for me, obviously, to for, for the coalition to be able to store as much of, as much stuff as we could and to also see it from from beginning to end. So on demolition day, I, we went we went into every tent and put X's on them, make sure there was no bodies, all of that. That was that. Mm. Well, that was hard. Mm. That was hard. because I prayed. I prayed that. I wouldn't find something because, you know, when you're taking everything away from somebody, they could easily give up hope. Right. And I just said, God, please don't let there be a person in one of these tents. Wow. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. That's a lot to carry that, you know, y'all did that. Everything worked out, but you're still carrying it. You're yeah. Still you're tired. There's a lot of stuff going on, but these are some of the things that um, are the cost of what we're doing. And um, so, you know, I, I thank you. So with me now. Yeah, we see it. Oh, y'all are together now. I see you. Yeah, my, my phone died. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. But thank you. Thank you for sharing your heart about that, because uh, that was one of the, the, the animals and people's things uh, really resonated with me. Uh, in my walk. So um, I appreciate you doing that and being able to be vulnerable to show your feelings about it. I thank you for that. So Erin, mm -hmm. um, we still got people chiming in and watching and uh, not a lot of comments right now or questions. So, um, and I know our time is running out, so I'm going to give it back to you to do your magic. Well, I just want to say um, again, you are heroes to me and I've been serving people for so long, um, for a very long time. And to be able to watch the work and the effort, um, it just, it just moves me and I've enjoyed it. I do want to tell you this though, um, Joe, um, the day that I met Jess, we became friends, but almost lost that friendship, Bethany, because the gentleman whose dogs you have, he was with us. And I made a statement that people who know me know I have a phobia of dogs. I'm afraid of dogs. Yeah, and I they literally that. walked away from me and said I couldn't be their friend. So I had to I had to I kiss know. up to get friendship. We, we didn't just met, you know, but <laughs> they were ready to kick me to the curb because I didn't, you know, I got a dog phobia. But anyway, <laughs> here here's here's what what is to me, um, the part that I, I really love because I'm a God man and I don't make any apologies about that. There's some, there's a consistency that moved me from the day that I began meeting all of you. All of your organizations have the word heart in it. Each, each one has the word heart and it really begins and ends there. You must have a heart for people. 
you, you, you must, you have to have a heart for people and the effort and the energy that goes into everything that you do come from that source. And I can promise you, um, without long stories right now, I can promise you there are people who ask themselves and probably ask you, how do you do what you do? And the honest truth is some people just not going to get it. And it's simply because they don't have a heart for that. Doesn't mean they don't have a heart, but they don't have a heart to be able to see and to look. Um, this is what Jessica just called it, Lisa. She called it uh, demolition day, right? Um, and that's what happened, right? Home, homes were um, demolished, right? Which means dreams were demolished, which means um, esteem was was demolished. And one of the things that we often look at is the people that we serve, they have the most, their lives are intruded upon more than anybody else's, right? They're before cameras that they don't ask to be in front of. They have stories written about them, right? People know more of their business than anyone else's. And it's such an intrusive, intrusive life. And part of the role that you play is you become a cloak. You, you get to shield them from some of those things and rehumanize the lives that was take the humanity that was stolen away. And that can only come from a heart. <laughs> That's what the Tin Man wanted. He wanted a heart. So um, I just want to be able to run through this. Right. Um, when we're talking about trauma, we know that symptoms of trauma look like emotional, cognitive, behavioral physical and spiritual. You've all talked about the impact. Um, when we talk about recovery and, and recovery does happen, uh, we talk about acknowledging your experience, identifying sim symptoms, fostering healthy relationships, finding support networks. But that fifth piece, which is always the most important to me, which is where I'm going, is focus on your own needs. So I'm going to ask you and start with you, Kenya. Kenya, in the midst of all the pouring out, how does Kenya take care of Kenya? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I'm still figuring that out. I have a really supportive family. I have a fantastic husband who, if I didn't have him, you know, at this rate, I would be out. I would be out there with people. <laughs> so, um, because we're, you know, for us, it's nonstop, you know, and outside of this work, you know, I have for-profit work that I do. I have a whole other nonprofit. So it's nonstop. It's really about, you know, for me personally, I keep my prayer life together. I make sure that I'm trying to, you know, have a workout every day or every other day. It's just, to, it just clears that space because we can't be present if we're empty. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that it's like, you can't, we're supposed to pour not from an empty cup, we're supposed to pour from our abundance. So we have to also have what we need for ourselves too. And it is, it's a balancing act. And definitely this situation, I think for all of us, you know, just being out there on the ground has kind of thrown all of us off balance. We're still regrouping and we're still processing what we have individually and collectively seen and experienced through this process, you know, and we all process in different ways. like. Jessica is more emotional than me, but for me, my emotion results in fatigue. You know, everybody's different. And so it's really about managing all of that and supporting each other because we're, we're all walking on this journey together, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really, that's, that's what I can say right now. I'm very much still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Just the same question for you. I see you hiding back there. What's oh, your, what, how do you self care? How do you self care? My phone's, this, this phone's about to die too. Um, so I literally, um, for me lately, I'll, Kenya's mom has the most soothing voice on the planet to me. And she gets jealous because I just take her mother all the way over. I'm like, ah, ah. listen, her mother, I just asked Miss Sandra, please just, and I, and I, I, this wasn't me a year ago, but this is me now. I'm like, Miss Sandra, will you please pray for me? Will you please pray for me? Will you just say a prayer for me? And there's some girl, there's some other people that I that I know that it just it, it calms me down. So what I when I'm when I'm finding for me in this journey, and and I'm telling you, a year ago, not that I I, I was I mean, no anti religion, but I just wasn't in this space. Um, I, I all my friends that I know can can pray and and do it and just hit, and hit my soul. I, will you pray for me? Pray with me. Pray for me. Pray over me. Pray all of that. I need it. 
Because I don't even know if I know how to pray properly, but I'm like, I, I try to find somebody to pray for me because I, I, it's a lot. And she's right. I am the emotional one. By all means, I, man, them, them tears will come down. You think I'm an actress, but I'm not acting. It's real. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't help. I, I, I really, I love big. Um, and I do have a big heart. And, and everybody on this call has a huge heart. And um, I'm honored to work with every single person on this call. And, and I think that I love you guys. And you guys help me to keep doing this work. Real <laughs> Uh -huh. you guys. Same girl, same thing, same. That's yeah. for sure. Bethany, same thing for you. Thank you, Jess. Bethany, mm -hmm. self care. What does it look like for you? How how do you how do you focus on your own needs when you have to? I have no idea, Aaron. If you have any ideas, if you could, if you could give me about seventy four more hours in the day, and uh, and, and and probably a lot of whiskey at this point, I. Uh, <laughs> It is. <laughs> like we said, we're, we're all learning, you know, and, and we've hit walls and, and it's honestly like it's only because of like Joe who keeps me going all the time and who like slows me down, which is actually, if you know, Joe, that's saying a lot. We both go 100 miles an hour. But, you know, like I've called I've called Jessica in the middle of the night, just having a like total meltdown and having this like network of people that actually understand you know, everybody keeps telling us, like, you have to take a break, like, you have to take care of yourself. And obviously, you know, that, that is a huge focus. And I do take that to heart. There just hasn't, there's, we're in a point right now where we're just really trying to get, to get to a place where we can step back and say, okay, I know everything's going to be all right if we step back for a second. You know, yeah. just having that goal and having that understanding and something to work for that that kind of fuels me for now but but our tank our tanks definitely we've hit a few walls our tanks have been empty a couple of times but that's why mm -hmm. we're all kind of that's why we're all one big thing you know like yeah. yeah thank you all right joe you same thing yeah joe so <laughs> all of the things that were just said are are so true i will say that i think um i i listen i think that i listened to others and this today that this and even this experience here is reward for me. It, it helps, it gives me life again. To me, that's <laughs> that's you provided self care, I or know. you provided care, and that in and of itself. Um, yes. uh, so I don't. Um, I'm not there yet with everything that I need to do on a daily basis um, to balance my life with with, my, uh, with both of my jobs. But however. Um, it's, uh, I'm getting there, and uh, <laughs> there's, um, you know, I, I think I listen to others from, or um, guidance. Sometimes people outside of me and around me know when I need to take a break. <laughs> 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 then I do. Look at you, Jessica, Jessica's so, like, yeah, Joe, go sleep, go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah no, but I, but I do um, every, every, uh, so every two weeks or so, three weeks, I will just take a day. Off and on the team, so that I'm gonna spend time with my partner. I'm gonna be home. Um, and the other is just uh, not worrying as much. There are, um, there was a uh, a time whenever I felt like everything was on my shoulders at the end of the day, and it all came back down to me. Well, now um, I know that it will happen. There was whether I'm I'm not particularly religious, but I I am spiritual, and there's something going on that's a higher power because. When, when we need something, it might not come 60 days in advance, but it happens right before we need it. We found ourselves, a, a van was miraculously gifted to us by a board member, and he had the foresight to know that we needed it, and it happened right before COVID, and it enabled us to be able to deliver those 92,000 pounds of ice. Yeah. Um, so not worrying is self-care for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. want to let you each know that um, part of it is, and I heard it as you're speaking, um, part of the self-care is that you're looking out for one another. And when you don't right, know what plan to put in place, um, you're blessed to have each other. And I, I swear you're on the right side of the universe because you are <laughs> loving some people. And I like that name, right, that talks about invisible because in reality, the people that we serve are invisible to so many but you see them and you see them because you see from your heart. Lisa mm -hmm. K, you know what time it is. We're ready to put the plane in the hangar. So check in with our folks, give us a last word. I'm gonna circle around with our guests and then we're gonna, we're gonna get out of here. Okay. 
Well, we have some folks uh, ch chiming in and just really, really bringing attention that they love you and they really want you to be intentional about your self care. I know that's Kelly. I know that's Kelly because he's on me all the time about it. I know that's Kelly. Yeah, I, I'm kind of interpreting this that they see you. So our folks that are saying this, they see you and uh, they hear you and uh, they, you know, they know how much you are loved and needed and are really, really asking for you guys to uh, be intentional about doing a little self-care, a little bit more self-care um, and get filled up, you know, so to speak, so pour it out all the time. So, but uh, folks are thanking you uh, for your humanity, uh, a very humbling conversation. Uh, has been some of the, the, the comments coming tonight. So, um, but yeah, um, I just want to say as we take the frame of mind, or as you say, is that I know at this point, um, when I ride by where Tent City was, um, there's just this um, solemnness that falls over me. I know before when it was there, there was some concern and like, what can we do? Because it, it kept growing and growing. I'm like, wow, like what can we do to help make this bigger or better for them? Um, and I guess the county didn't see fit for that. So now it's empty and it's just like, it, it hurts my heart when I go by there because I know that that ground held love and held a community and uh, it served its purpose for our neighbors. And now it's just a big so um, it just kind of serves like, ugh. but um, now that I'm talking to you guys and I'm more embedded, I'm hoping that my trauma, my vicarious trauma can change my mindset as I ride by there. I hope that we can see, see some grass, spring flowers, something that brings us hope that there are going to be uh, wonderful homes for our folks that are waiting. Um, and, and while they, if it goes past the 90 or 120, whatever it is, that there'll be an extension of some sort as we find those right places uh, for our neighbors. So um, thank you guys. You're my heroes, as Aaron said. Um, I can't wait. I think I have seen all of you, uh, but we didn't get together <laughs> But uh, you will see me, and um, I'll pull my mask down and say, I'm Lisa, so you better. <laughs> I can't wait to see you and thank you uh, in person. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much, you. Lisa. So, Jeff and Kenya, last words as we put our plane in the hangar. Uh, Heart to the Invisible Child Coalition is opening up a home, which we will have six men who were formerly houseless or living in Tent City, and we're super, super excited about that. Um, this is gonna be a house of love, a house with a house for growth, um, and something for them to look forward to for a much brighter future. Thank the you so much. Continues. The marathon continues. <laughs> yes, it does. yes, it does. And Kenya, before I turn it over to Bethany and Joe for last words, I wanna say, um, the important part for self-care, whatever that looks like, because not, um, day 91 is going to come and mm -hmm. those who needed us on day one is going to need us on day 91. And so that's that's the important piece for for self-care. Mm -hmm. Bethany, Joe, give us some last words, if you would. <laughs> I, mean, I, I will. But go ahead. I, no, I, just, I mean, honestly, like I really I don't think that you guys know how much this has been for us. To kind of you know to, to take our insides and spill them out since we've been taking care of everybody else's you know and and it's it's been an honor to talk to you guys and to have Jessica and Kenya with us because we are one big family and, and I, I love the future and, and what we've been able to do with Heartbeat is one and, and what we're going to do going forward. Yep. Um, for those that have commented, Kelly, if you want to send that self care plan, I work. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll yes. Yes. <laughs> We the, will all some gift certificates to aspire. Well, and we'll go to <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would say I wanted to make a slight clarification. It's not a, it's not huge, but we from yes from March first we had 120 days, so it does go through the end of June 30th. June 30th. And yeah. for those that organizations and people that are interested in helping, um, there is so much that we still will and do need whether while we're focused at the hotel at the moment we're going to be expanding a lot more out back out into um the, to uh, the various encampments and and now that there, there's so many people that are more spread out than they were before or yeah. maybe they're always and so we may be able to um 
to uh, focus. to uh, focus on some people that we didn't even know or didn't have bandwidth bandwidth to be able to um to serve. Um, so um, stay patient. Um, we're we're while we're kind of locked behind a. Uh, closed gates at the moment. Um, that no, doesn't. Please keep continuing to reach out, and um, we would we love hearing from you, and we'd love to be able to to work with you uh, now and in the future. Yeah. So uh, thank, thank you. All, thank you both for having yeah, us. Yeah. Thank you for real. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm gonna let you do the warm line schmill, and then we're gonna close the door to the hangar. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I just want to remind everybody, or if you didn't know, that PRN has a warm line. And uh, it's free, confidential, 24-7. Uh, it's ran by uh, PRN staff, which are uh, peer support specialists, which means we've been there and done that. And we are far enough along in our recovery and our emotional wellness that now we can reach back and walk with you. So it literally means um, warm line means warm ears connected to a warm heart. We're not there to solve all your problems. We're there to listen, uh, offer our own lived experience and walk with you and uh, help you through that moment. So write this number down, share it, 833-390-7728. Share it with everybody you know. Um, you may just get me on there. I don't know. So there, we've got some a, a lot of wonderful PRN staff. And uh, it's always a joy to walk with folks that are just feeling whatever's going on. Uh, we're there for you. So spread the news. Write it down. Thank you so much, Lisa <laughs> K. All right. Kenya and Jess were making me laugh. Thank you so very no, much no, for no, hanging no. out. With you got to tell him. You got to tell him. So yeah. what did he say? Turn your phone sideways. You texted it to me. So I tried it. It did not I work. It did not work. It did not work. Said that text a while ago, but this, this is how we do right here. Now you can see behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh my God! And I'm, I'm sorry, Lisa. I was laughing at you. <laughs> hey, but dig this. Oh we need God. that because the, you, what you're doing right now, seriously, when you leave here, the seriousness of what you are doing, you need this moment, and you need moments like this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went through something like that yesterday with somebody <laughs> laughing all day. Yeah, Listen, you have like as red as is Aaron's walls right I, now. <laughs> I was trying not to breathe. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to pass out from laughter. I can't, I can't. Oh, this is the right, this is the right place. Trust me. This is our self-care right here. So. This, is, this is it right here. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody, thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate you. And um, we would, we would rather be no place else than in your presence right now. So <laughs> those who are watching, make sure that you share those that are watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we just want to thank you for hanging out. You were on you were on screen today with superheroes. You sat and took the time to watch some people who are really doing the damn thing. And it comes from the heart, deep in the heart, where the whole issue is the life of the person in front of us. Thank you, Kenya. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Bethany and Joe out in cyberspace, wherever you are. We love you. <laughs> And uh, we'll be seeing you very, very soon. Happy birthday to me. Yep, I said happy it. Happy and um, Yep, yep. Tomorrow's that day. So y'all celebrate for me. And um, much love, okay? Talk to All you right. very, very soon. See you next All week. Right. Good night. Bye.